This time it's my turn to play dirty. <laughs> ah, that's funny. I've got a box, so you guys know what that means. It is mystery box challenge time once again. So let's crack this open and see what crazy supplies I've got to DIY with this time. First, hello and welcome back to my whiskey craft buddies who are here each week to DIY with me. If you are not already a craft buddy or this is the first time we're meeting, hello and welcome. My name is Whitney, this is Whiskey and Wit, and on this channel I love to share DIY and budget home decor content, everything from wood builds and Cricut all the way to thrifting and Dollar Tree DIYs, which is the theme of this mystery box. So if you are new to the mystery box challenge, this was started a couple years ago by one of my favorite people on YouTube, Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap. She has has done all the legwork behind this collab that I know you guys have grown to really love. So be sure to check out her channel after this video and there'll also be a full playlist of everybody participating. So I packed up a box of like 10-ish craft items from Dollar Tree and I also had to make sure two of those were challenge items that were a little tricky to craft with. I packed that up and sent it off to Kelly Barlow at Kelly Barlow Creations. If you don't know Kelly, you definitely should. Be sure to check out her video after this to see what I sent her and also what she created. You will not want to miss it. And then I got a box from my friend Melanie over at Simple Made Pretty. I became friends with Melanie first on Instagram and now over here on YouTube. She makes some adorable stuff. If you like my content, you will definitely love hers. So be sure to check her out as well. I don't know what's inside. I just opened it. So then that way you didn't have to see me struggle on camera. I know sometimes you guys like to see that, but today we're we're gonna bypass that struggle because I'm sure I'll be struggling later on in the video. Is what we're working with, and it's a smaller box than I'm used to, which is sometimes terrifying, sometimes great. So we'll see. A little cactus card. This time it's my turn to play dirty. <laughs> Uh, that's funny. But seriously, your box has some cute things. I can't wait to see what you create. Talk soon with Melanie. So I sent Melanie a box, I think a couple rounds ago. I'll have to go back and watch that video and see if I was ruthless or nice. Because literally it's like 50-50. Sometimes it's super ruthless. Sometimes you get a box and you're like, wow, they were really easy on me. So hopefully that will be what Melanie did for me in this box. Everything in here is Dollar Tree. So first being, ooh, some foliage is what the tag says, but this is nice. Sometimes Dollar Tree foliage and greenery can look cheap. So I like this, even though it's plastic, it doesn't look too chintzy. So we can definitely do something with that. This is called a wisteria stem. I love the pink for spring. Sign that says garden, it's got holes so we can hang it up. Oh, we've got some flower coasters. Those are cute. They're like little flower shapes. We also have some of these little pots. These are cute. I have a pack of these that I purchased and I have no idea what to do with them. So I'm going to have to figure it out. They look like just like little greenery pieces. How cute would that be? You don't have to necessarily use the stick, but how cute would that be like on a wood sign? My wheels are already turning. Oh, this is cute. It's like a little ring box. I think that's super cute. Oh, cute. Some pink like Chanel yarn. That's a perfect spring color. Ooh, and I have some of these too, but I have not used it yet. Little mini burlap shaped flags. So the package is like this, but they hang like this. These little like bunting. I'm a fan. That is all super cute stuff. And I love it because it's cute, but it's not necessarily stuff that I would pick out for myself. So I feel like that is another fun element of this mystery box challenge. So this is challenge item number one. She packed it all cute with the little stickers. Suspense, suspense, suspense. Oh, oh, headbands. The pro These are cute. I'm not going to want to cut these up, but okay. Also, like the funny thing is, as I open these and I show you guys and I'm like, oh, not that bad. And then I get time to craft and like, like banging my head against the table. So who knows? Hopefully that idea works that I have in my head. And a pencil holder. That's a cute color. Okay. I can work with this. Give me a minute. I'll be right back and we will get DIYing. All right, let's do this thing. So I've got my box here. And the first thing that I am going to grab to DIY with is this banner. And I'm also grabbing these coasters. I absolutely love garlands and banners, all the things like that that you can hang. And so I knew I wanted to do that with this item. Now in the pack of coasters, you get four of them. And I thought I could use two for the two ends of the six pieces. And then I could also cut them up into smaller pieces to make them stretch a little further because I didn't have any other ones in my stash to use. 
So I started just kind of cutting them up and then it popped into my head what I was going to put on it. Here comes the sun. Do, 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 do. I've been singing that song to my son Finn for the past couple weeks because the weather has been just hit or miss here in Illinois. So I just used a font in Cricut Design Space and I cut it out in a light purple color as well as this really pretty berry raspberry color and I put down the purple first I cut it in the same size and then you just put one a little bit to the right so it looks like a fun drop shadow I've been loving to do this on so many different projects and so I thought it would look really cute on this banner so after I did here comes the sun I had two open on either side so I used my hot glue gun and put a full coaster on either one I'm just using my glue on some of the larger pieces being careful not to burn my fingers which I probably did at some point and then I cut apart those headbands that was a challenge item for another project and I actually am showing these to you out of order so I had already cut it up but I pulled off some of those little pearl beads to add them as the center of the flowers then I just started chopping up the other ones and use them as kind of like embellishments to hang off either side and I used some more of those pearls to jazz it up then I had a bunch more pearls left so I decided to add some little drops of hot glue and add them around kind of like little bejeweled sparkles and I thought it looked really cute it popped off the burlap and I was glad I had some extras Here's how this turned out. I think it is so cute. I love that it goes between kind of spring and summer with the pink colors. I think I'll put this up over some food this summer when we have pool parties because our new house has a pool. So, and those pearls from the challenge item were the perfect addition that just kind of happened along the way. For this next one, I am grabbing these mini flower pots. I had a second set of my stash and then I headed out to the wood pile. All right, let's see what's in the scrap wood pile. I've got it very organized, as you can tell. I had a decent chunk of pieces left over from my recent fence picket DIY video. So I took one of the longer ones and I just used my saw to cut off the dog ear at the top so it was just like a regular one by six. I gave it a really good sand because fence pickets are notoriously very rough and they won't take stain that well if they're not sanded down. Then I took the two little flower pots from each pack to give me four total and I used some Gorilla Glue wood glue to put it on the smaller part of the pot and stick it to the corner of my piece of wood. Now you could easily flip them over and do this in reverse and have the larger part of the pot be the top. However, I thought I would get better adhesion with the glue if I put it on, you know, a flat surface. So once I got them all placed, I took a scrap piece of one by six, put it on the top, and then I also added some of Finn's chalk in a bucket and some sealant in a can just to put some weight on it. I let it sit for about 20 minutes, and once they were all dry, I used some Early American Stain by Minwax, but Verithane's Early American looks exactly the same. You can get that at Home Depot. And I stained the entire thing, including the little legs, because they are made out of wood, those little pots. I made sure to get in all the nooks and crannies, all of the edges, and once that was dry, I have a beautiful riser that I can use throughout my house. I have these things literally everywhere because the wood tone just makes my heart happy and it makes things like natural elements with flowers or greenery or like the stone lamp I have behind it, it really helps pop off different elements. So those little legs, easy to add. You could easily put it on some wood from Dollar Tree if you want to keep it all Dollar Tree, but I love this one. The second I saw this one, I knew it was going to be a beautiful ring box. So this is the one where I'm going to put the twist in with no adhesive. So the first thing I did was remove the stickers as well as the hardware. I just needed a little screwdriver and the pieces came right off. After I removed the front and the hinges, I gave it a really good sand because Dollar Tree wood items are notorious for having rough edges and I just wanted to make sure it was nice and cleaned up. Then I took all of my hardware pieces and put them on the sticky side of some masking tape and this is going to help me when I go to spray paint them so I don't lose them everywhere. Once you spray paint on the top, they're not going to roll on you and it just helped in the overall process so you're not hunting for a teeny little screw. Then I took the box and stained the entire thing in dark walnut just because I wanted that deep wood tone versus the unfinished wood. And once everything was dry, I just had to reassemble it. So I just matched up the hinges and the front little clasp where they were and screwed them back in. Easy peasy. So then to make it an actual ring box where you could display stuff, I needed to figure out a plan where I could just shove stuff in there essentially so I didn't have to use anything to adhere it. So I cut up some Dollar Tree felt in approximately the width of the box, rolled it up, and then it was a little too big so I just took my scissors and trimmed the ends until it fit perfectly. 
and with the tension in there it's just gonna sit I ended up doing that three times and then I just have three little areas where in my box I can put jewelry I really like the black hardware it looks really modern if you know somebody getting married or that got engaged recently this would make a great personalized gift especially with a stencil on top and no one would guess that it came from Dollar Tree Right when I opened the box with these little wood cutouts, I had a vision in my mind. So let's get started and make it come to life. So from my stash, I'm grabbing a wood round sign from my Expressions Vinyl Mystery Box, a C that I cut out using my new X-Tool machine, which I just did a video on that. If you're interested in the laser cutter, check that out. And then I just chopped off the bottom of those little picks. Then I am taking my wood round outside and staining it in, you guessed it, early American stain. I get on a kick and I use like the same stain for all my projects. It just helps my house look cohesive. Then I'm going to take the C that I cut out on just some basswood. It's three millimeters thick and paint it white. I'm making sure to get all the edges and then I'm going to take some of this antique green chalk paint and paint my little leaves. Now I'm going to use the back actually as the front so I just painted the one side as well as the edges and then I took a medium and a light green compared to that chalk paint and I'm using a disposable makeup sponge that I just chopped in half and I'm just dabbing around the edges this is going to make your piece kind of pop off and it's going to make it not look so flat look more like a natural leaf and then once I did the lighter color I went back through with a little bit darker of green and this just really helped them pop you'll see when it gets on the sign I'm glad I did that three-dimensional color. Then using the C as a guide, I'm taking some painter's tape so the center section is taped off because I wanted that to be black. So I wanted to have black as well as wood tones. Then I painted the inside of that area as well as the edges of my sign black. Then it was time to assemble. So I've been using the super glue gel because my front door where I like to put these signs gets a ton of sun and heat and I don't want any hot glue to melt because it already has done that on me. Then I'm using those little raised pieces on the back of my greenery to act as little feet and that's where my super glue is going. Then my last step was to create just a little bow and you guys I'm not the best at making bows. Usually I just kind of throw stuff in a pile and call it a day. This one I just kind of looped it around but you could tie it just like a shoelace. And the key to making a bow look more put together than you probably think you are is dovetailing the end so you just fold it in half and cut it at an angle and it is gonna make it look five million times better. I also tied on a couple extra pieces in the back to make the bow look thicker, and I used my staple gun to staple it to the sign, again, so I don't have hot glue to melt on my front door. I also ended up adding just a little scrap piece in the center here to give it one more tail, just to make it look a lot more full, because that center looked kind of bare. And then to add a hanger, it's as simple as taking some jute twine and your staple gun, adding a hanger to the back, and then you can trim up any extra ribbon that is hanging anywhere you don't want it. You could keep this Dollar Tree in the sense of getting a Dollar Tree wood round, Dollar Tree ribbon, and then for the monogram, you obviously don't have to have a laser to cut out your own. This is just one I had in my stash. You can get these at any craft store, and then you could make a really fun, everyday modern farmhouse hanger as well. What in the world am I gonna do with this pencil holder? So this pencil holder was going to be like six different things in my mind when I was planning. And then it kind of came about that I needed a plan for this garden sign as well. So I was like, let's put them together. Okay, I've got a one by six here. So I'm going to use this and I'm going to have to cut that down to fit my sign. So I took my pencil cup without the suction cup that I removed earlier, as well as the garden sign, laid it out and marked how big I needed my one by six to be. I gave it a quick cut on my saw and then I just sanded the edges. This is a really nice piece of one by six. I had it left over from our floating shelves and so it didn't need a ton of sanding, but I do like to make sure it's sanded before I stain like this because sanded wood is going to take stain a million times better. Then to make my pink cup as well as the metal garden sign look like they're supposed to go together, I gave them both a coat of matte black spray paint. I let everything dry overnight and then I'm taking some super glue to glue my metal piece down to my wood because it works on both metal and wood. And then I'm going to put some items from my craft room down to weigh it down while it's going to dry. Then I put my pencil cup down and marked where I needed a hanger to go so my cup would hang where I needed it. And I'm taking a one inch screw and I'm just carefully putting it in so that it hangs out a little bit so it acts as a hook. 
Then my last step is to add some hangers to the top and the bottom, the top so I can hang it and the bottom so I can hang some tools off of it. I'm just using a traditional drill bit. And then I have some of these C hooks left over from my outdoor fence picket signs that I've been making. I just twisted two in the top on either end and then five in the bottom. To hang it up near a garden bed or on a deck like I did here, I just used two large plant hooks from Dollar Tree and then I hooked the two black hooks on the top of the sign to those plant hooks. Then you can easily hang up things like garden rakes and the little cup is perfect for pruning shears and any other tools you might need in your garden. Hold up, before we get into this next project, have you ever wanted to send me a mystery box? Well, now is your chance. Courtney has created a spinoff of this challenge to create the subscriber mystery box. So she's asked me to participate in May. She did her first one back in March and I am so excited. So I will have all the details down in the description where you can go fill out a quick form and then we will pick someone at random. One person will send Courtney a box, someone will send me a box and you will be able to select challenge items and then we will create a video all around that box. So there's two separate forms. I have one, Courtney has one, fill it out. Here are all the details as far as timing and when that video will go live. So check the description for more on that and let's get back into the project. There's a couple more things we got to tackle in this box, one being the yarn and the other one is the challenge headband. Now I did show you a little bit earlier how I used the pearls, but this was my original plan for the headbands. I started by taking the yarn and cutting nine pieces to the same length so that I could braid them together. I tied the top and then I sectioned off my nine pieces into groups of three, so three chunks of three. Then I braided a really long strand to make it look like that super thick yarn that you can get to make those like hand knit blankets. The painter's tape is just to help so I have something to hold it while I am braiding. Then I grabbed this Dollar Tree sign that I had in my stash. Starting in the center left of my sign, I just put some hot glue down and started spiraling it around until I got a nice bed for this flower arrangement that I thought of. I originally thought this was gonna look more like a flower, but I got to this point and realized I needed to pivot a little bit more. So that's totally fine, that is DIYing for you. I ended up chopping up my headband and I wanted to get that fabric off because I thought I could spiral them up and make some cute little like silk looking flowers. It worked out pretty well. I just started at one end, used some hot glue and spiraled it around till I got to the size I wanted and I glued it to the center of my pink circle. Think of the Chanel yarn underneath as a bed for these flowers. Then I chopped up the other headband and used some hot glue to add the pearl bead from the other headband to the center and that really made it look more like a flower. I was able to make one more small one out of that fabric from the headband and I realized I needed more but I ran out of headband fabric. So I grabbed some pink and white felt from my stash to kind of do something similar. You can just take a circle, cut a spiral within the circle and then you can wrap it around and that will help you create a little felt flower. Once that was all kind of trimmed and adhered, I added the pink ones, some more white ones, as well as additional filler. My last step was to add a saying to the right hand side and I decided to do it with heat transfer vinyl just because I thought these small letters would be easier to weed on heat transfer vinyl than traditional vinyl. It actually worked out pretty good. I think I pressed it a little too hot. So I would suggest on your mini press doing the lowest setting, not the middle setting. And I thought this would be a really cute Mother's Day sign or it could be great for a friend that just became a mom. Really, if you've got somebody in your circle that would appreciate some home decor with a verse on it, this could be great for that. Also, you could make it for yourself, but I think this turned out so cute and you would not guess that it's a bunch of headbands. And then finally from the box, I had to use the greenery and the wisteria stems and I actually needed an arrangement for my downstairs table because I took down all my Easter stuff. So I decided to stuff the bottom with the tissue paper that Melanie sent me in the box. And then I started by cutting apart the one she sent me as well as a similar wisteria stem that I grabbed prior. I was also gonna try to do something with this cherry blossom, but I ended up pulling it out before you see the final one. It was just too tall for the wisteria stems. But I took those one by one after cutting them apart with my tin snips and just put them all around this really pretty wicker vase. This is a $5 little container that I'm using as a vase that I got at the Target dollar spot. And then I filled in the inside with the little greenery pieces. 
Now I like to mix Dollar Tree florals if I use them with something from like Walmart or Michaels because it helps elevate it and it makes it not all look like Dollar Tree flowers. And so you've got that darker green mixed with the lighter green. And I think this adds some nice pop of color when people come in our front door. That's gonna do it for this round of the Mystery Box Challenge. A huge thank you to Melanie for this awesome box. And also be sure to check the description for the full playlist because up next for you is Kelly's video over at Kelly Barlow Creations. Be sure to click that link so you can see what I sent to her and what she does with it. Also, as always, a huge thank you to Courtney for coordinating everything behind the scenes. She does so much work to make this happen every other month and we appreciate her. Thanks so much for watching. Hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.